Hey everybody, this is Reno, and we're back to LEGO DC Super Villains. New day for me, new area, load in. Um, I guess we are going to the swamp at this point. We want to kind of leave Gotham City for the last. So let's swap to somebody that can fly and fly over there. Although, you know... Why do that when we could just fast travel? And that also worked. Now, it doesn't actually seem like there's a gold brick in this Legion of Doom area, and I don't know if that's because I already collected it, because there's a sideways traveler in the middle of that, or if there was uh, never anything there. It's weird that the gold brick would be way up here and in the back. Well, I'll be darned if that isn't that the case. So it's just like a black frog. So we are, I guess, killing frogs? And because we have demolition mode on, I assume the trick here is that they're going to be somewhere around this area, but I question how far away they would really be. Hmm. Because once you get to like this point, you're pretty far away. And there's just riveting all over the place. And see, I don't know if this is some reference to something that I just don't am not getting, or if this is just an odd little experiment of a challenge, which is very different from all the other challenges we've done. Um, It almost seems like I am supposed to try and listen for ribbits, but I'm like hearing ones over here. There's two more, and if we've gotten that many from this section, it, it's hard to believe that there would be two more that I'm missing. I wonder if Perhaps the idea is that they're appearing and then disappearing and I have to just find the right alcove for them to be in. Yeah, that doesn't seem right. Let's jump down and see if we it's down here. It's, it's just a real weird location for a challenge to be behind what you would perceive would have been the last of it. You would have just kind of assumed that the backside of this would have connected to nothing and this would have all just been set dressing. Again, this just feels really far away from where I would expect the frogs to be. And flying higher up. I mean, we can get all the way up here. But then you just kind of hit an invisible wall at that point. So yeah, it just kind of feels like there was the beginnings of a thought of having more wall-based sections. And I flew away far enough for it to reset, so that tells me something, too. That it can't be that far away. 
So it really does kind of have to be over here. Hmm. There's just a lot of green vines over in this section, so... If there is a frog in this section, that'd be hard to see. Is there possibly a frog on the mushrooms up here? Yes. So that means there's probably either a frog on the mushrooms over here, which I don't see, or there's a higher point for one more frog. But we don't want to get too far away. I think that's inherently the problem here is it feels like there should just be an invisible ring around this section that says find the frogs within this ring and as long as you make it big enough that would be fine for a kid's game instead of chancing that I'll go too high or too low and then just it will unload and reset the whole challenge. Maybe there's one in the tree over here. Yep. So the green frogs jumped on the black frog and turned into a gold brick. Shoot it, shoot it. Perhaps the best thing is hidden magical property. properties. And I am just going to be left completely unsure as to what that was all about. So a little alcove here looks like that that would have led somewhere, but it seemingly doesn't. We'd already done this statue and repainted that. Let's see. We'll use our plant powers that I don't believe we had before. Well, we didn't actually need the plant powers, did we? Hmm. Okay. We have a gold brick connected to this. We just need, I guess, to dig it up. So, it seems like multiple characters, but the game has just gotten stupidly easy as far as the multiple character puzzles, because it just tells you exactly what character you need. I have no idea what that's a reference to. A door and something behind the door in the DC universe could be a lot of different characters and this symbol doesn't mean anything to me here we have another can't take a picture when you're flying by the way um, have another one of these and we can change Which that brings about an interesting point that I wanted to consider here. As far as video settings, brightness. What if we were to just jack that up to 75? Just like an incredibly big thing. 
Oh, you can change the subtitle size. I wonder if you can... Oh, you can just turn them off that way. Interesting. They kind of hide it, hid it behind there. So yeah, you can jack up the brightness and then you have darker, uh, lighter blacks as far as not a deep inky black color. I guess that's probably a reference to what's behind here. Uh, and I guess that makes it a little bit more cartoony, but only by a little bit by compromising a considerable amount of your visual aesthetics. Let's see what he wants again. So we're gonna shoot the gators, that's not terrible as an idea. And this swamp guy I mean he looks he definitely feels like he'd be an interesting character. So we have to hit ten of them but they do seem to just randomly spawn. Hmm. And it doesn't really feel like we're shooting meat at them as much as we're just shooting missiles at them or lego studs. And yeah it'll just be a matter of time just wait till they start to show up again. My main complaint. Is that there isn't even like one interesting character like this guy in every area. Man, and we have just really already done most of everything in the swamp. It's not particularly the biggest area, so I guess I really shouldn't be super surprised by that. We're getting potentially not even going to get as many studs as I thought we might in the open world at this rate. We're going to just accomplish everything. You are you within the wickets of one of the brightest minds. Chang, 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 so apparently this is a character I don't recognize. I have been hatching a plan, plan, plan to create, to create the doomiest, doomiest, doomiest device, device of all time. time. You seem you capable of carrying out carrying out tasks. tasks. Assist, Assist with, my with my plan and I and shall, I shall spare, spare your puny, your puny existence. existence. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this is like a really really old Superman villain, but if I was wrong about that I would just assume it is a Flash character. Alright. So, do we know where the pieces are? Yes, they are all in the middle here. We can just work our way to Bell Reeve. There's really not a lot to do on this road, and this is the only road in the swamp, so that limits them potentially making uh, races also in the area, unless they're going to be swamp boat, airboat races. 
and those jumps are still ridiculous. That's totally a feature that should have been left on the cutting room floor, because it just doesn't work. It got me one piece while we wander around. We can potentially try to find some other things to break for the challenge. Some of these plants. We look at the map. Seems like all the other collectibles are just closer this way. So you can see how you would easily minimize this area and just move towards having Gotham be, be much more fleshed out. Very few people are going to care about a swamp area. You could have easily just had a swamp area in the edge of Gotham and the Legion of Doom head right next to Gotham. You could also have a prison like this, just have a lot more platforming and parkouring elements to it to justify its existence instead of an entire side of a three-faced box really have nothing going on for it and yet, yet they play some studs to try and hide that fact. all kinds of just pointless places. Okay, we've got a joker face here. Joker's pies don't get high enough to play basketball. Hmm. hmm. So we need three goons. These special attacks that characters can do are really too special. Like, because noticeably, for every special B attack, you had to make one of those for every blue character, uh, or every single character in the game. Um, which that's a lot to have to program special B attacks for every single one of these characters that most players will not see. It would make more sense to not have special attacks and get the lift flap working when all of the secondary characters are talking. That voice is very weird because it's coming out of like one side of my ear from some off-screen character. So I assume this is just going to be a dance hey, yo, menu game. Yo, famous, famous, do this, do this. Now I don't hate this as a mini game, 
this there's been dancing mini games in like the Lego movie Lego game. Um, it's it's not super Lego y, but it's fine. And it looks like you could pretty much mess up and it would just let you keep on playing until you got it right. Which maybe means you could get like a you could just try forever. Was it really necessary to get rid of the characters instead of just having them go into a dance animation on the floor, which would have been the more logical way to wrap that up? In my mind, it, that's how I would have done it, and that's how I've seen them do it before in LEGO games. I guess they think that writing is somewhat funny, and I mean, it's not awful. But. So that was the piece we needed to collect for the mission. So there's a race here. Like probably do, but I don't want to start it yet. There's a gold brick. She said she needed me a sweater. My mom makes so we need to be playing as Poison Ivy first. My plants are calling. calling. It's your, it's your fault. We're in this mess. mess. When I get out, I get out. I'm, I'm gonna eat gonna as eat many, many pancakes, pancakes as I can. As I can. <laughs> So we just needed to find the three flowers in the area and do a cauldron puzzle. <laughs> and so then we're gonna let these guys escape, I guess. Which will open the gate. It definitely feels like there should have been more of that in this game. Right away. Right away. Like. Freedom! Freedom! Hey, hey, mm. I got, I got you, something. you something. I hope you, I hope like, you like, it. like it. It's not it's quite, not as, quite pretty as pretty as you, as you, you but, but it's still, it's still nice. nice. I can't let any gas to this nigga. I can't let any gas It does seem to me like if you had the police arresting characters or if you had just people in the back of paddy wagons like this uh, which maybe that's the wrong term to use these days in the back of police transport cars um, if these were all throughout the overworld instead of there being gold in the back of them and you were freeing bad guys but still your comrades since you're playing as a bad guy there would be a kind of weird narrative of solidarity, companionship, uh, honor among thieves in general uh, that might fly and it would give you yet another goal in the overworld. Because we really are going to spend about 30 minutes in this open world. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to find that last collectible. I'm looking for an egg. And there's nothing on this side really either. Hmm. 
Why does something want to attack me over here? Like, I guess I was just locking into the fight that's like way, way up there at the top. Which that's a great example of the audio. Just sw swapping around. I do hear chickens, so there's our egg. There's another one of those to break. I can see there potentially being a mission to clean up like all the garbage in the swamp by poison ivy that could be another challenge certainly there we've got another guy to talk to after the fact let's finish the first quest that we've already activated. You are you within the wickedness of, of, of one of the Earth's brightest, brightest minds, minds. Chang Tsu! So I have I been, have hatching, been a hatching a plan to create, to create the, the doom. doom. Weirdly, I guess they want me to put it in here. <laughs> Just stand back. It feels like he's just gonna make a mini version of him. I was thinking it was gonna come out with a plate of um, eggs. So let's just go ahead and purchase Shang Tsu and then see where he's from. Let's see. Also known as Egg Fu, he's from the Science Squad and the Great Ten. Mad scientist who inhabits an egg shaped mutant flesh machine body. Shang Tsu leads a science squad in an attempt to create a new meta human warriors for his villainous bosses. Armed with advanced technology, Chang also has the ability to transform himself into a new body if needed. His character debut was in Wonder Woman number 157 in 1965, and his new version was introduced in 52 number six in 2006 which 52 number six i do not believe was in line with the new 52. the number 52 needs to be mentioned no is that me. at some point in dc they pretty much said they could only handle 52 comics coming out at the same time on a weekly basis plus I assume that probably also is any short-term releases um, and on a more editorial contextual level that number 52 just became like the magic number and so it became that there were 52 distinct universes in the DC universe whereas the Marvel Universe Metaverse kind of has an infinite number of them and honestly there's been so many reboots and resets that I w wouldn't be surprised if there is actually a lot more than 52 universes now um, the Earth 1, Earth 3 concept uh, Earth 2 concepts all are in that idea of there being 52 universes 
but then there's also at some point something changed and there's like a earth 516 or something like that so the numbers just got so big to imply that there's near infinite numbers of them All right. let's see what this guy wants us to do can't make the full jump if you bump into them you have to wait until they jump back into their spot but it would make a lot of sense for them just to be brick walls and you'd not be able to bump into them you're gonna, you're help, gonna me help me break in one way or another, so you might as well stay, well stay on my side. I have no idea who Parasite is as the character. Get out, get out of my way. Okay. Get down. Get down. I really, I really want, to. want to, but the boss is on fire. If I run away, away again. So they're giving us a full fight. I don't know if I really agree with the idea of the ace chemicals also leaking. So this is basically a gauntlet. You follow Parasite and beat on all these people. But this is where we have like super slap so a single hit will kill them anyways. Although I'm not sure if you got that B prompt, you couldn't just always beat somebody any anyways. This guy walks incredibly wonky with his arms swinging like crazy. He got broken there. Now what's interesting about his arms breaking off there is I don't think that's really how the bigger mega figs or the large style mini figs are made. They may have been made that way at one point but I think it's more of a ball and joint socket design like you would closer to what you just generally expect for an action figure and the larger minifigs really just break the scale of basically everything that being said you only really get these big characters in DC and Marvel type sets when you need a bigger character you're not going to get just a traditional Lego City character that's that big well it seems to me like he's implying that there's another quest hmm. Knock him off a spot. Just knock this guy back quite a bit. See, if he was supposed to be on this spot. Yeah, it just kind of feels like the game is glitched. So maybe we couldn't finish that quest. Maybe there's something <laughs> under here that is a quest. That might be it. Also, it's really easy to make some assumptions that the game is glitched when you've seen 
as much bugginess as we've seen, the games have to be like perfect or nearly perfect. So this was a quest. Hey, hey, you, you, I could use, I could some, use assistance. some assistance. Snake meter. I need you to I need round, you to round up, up some exotic, exotic snakes, snakes from, from this swamp, swamp so that I can extract, extract their, their, their deadly, deadly venom. venom. In exchange, I will reward, reward you handsomely. Turn over, Turn over every stone. stone. Search, every, Search corner every corner peak. peak. Okay. There's a snake. Hmm, are we supposed to kill them or are we supposed to collect them by pressing B? Hmm. Well, I pressed B that time and it just flew away. So, I'm somewhat confused as to what interaction is the appropriate interaction. There, I just hit B and then it ran away. So I assume what I'm doing is I'm just going to run into one giant snake at some point and have to beat that up and fight it. Also making an assumption that I don't have to chase after the snakes and catch it because then I'd basically have to be a speedster to pull that off. Each one of these quests potentially helps us find more of these challenge things. hit B and hit it in that case. Say say hello to my little friend. Hmm. There's what's his name? Al Capone? Scarface? I... That's from Batman the animated series. That'll be an interesting challenge. Hmm. But first, it seems like we fly back this way. And finish this quest. We're unlocking the quest in order. So yeah, hitting B or pressing uh, running into them both ended up with them both them all spawning here and that's just another character being unlocked not a gold brick which that feels weird. It feels definitely like there should be a gold brick and a item unlocked at the same time. Let's go ahead in here and get the gold brick in this room. Black cat on the cat scratch you say. Interesting. So several Lego builds here for little cat play sets. I can't wait to get my hands on her. She looks 
So floppy and warm. warm. This feels like an interesting joke idea, so why not take it to the next level and have the cat show up in each of the areas, uh, or multiple cats show up in multiple areas. Probably start by de destroying the bell. I have to say, even though we jacked up the brightness quite a bit from 50% to 75%. This doesn't look bad to my eye. Now, hopefully it doesn't look terribly blown out on YouTube, but generally YouTube videos tend to be pretty dark in anyways, uh, particularly if you're watching it on a TV. Uh, watching YouTube on a cell phone tends to be a lot brighter. It has to do more with the color range and the color gamut, I think is the phrase. Right. The fact that his gun doesn't exclusively target the Uh, mirrors is interesting. So, can we jump while we're invulnerable to cross over? Yes, we can. Is that what we really should have done? Probably not. They probably intended for you to turn into somebody like Poison Ivy, who's Probably a Every time I see my step mirror, mirror portal, I'd still be here. Hmm. Yeah, is that supposed to be a joke? It doesn't really make sense. And I assume this was a shrink. It's supposed to just shrink from that. And that unlocks Lady Shiva, who honestly doesn't even look much like the character I'm thinking of, so. I'm probably thinking of a different character. Nothing's really stopping us though from checking out Lady Shiva while we're unlocking it, so let's just swap to her. Let's see. Sandra Wusan, League of Shadows. Driven by a need for revenge, Sandra Wusan began her martial arts training in an early age and was soon regarded as one of the world's most dangerous fighters. Now, now known as Lady Shiva, she's become a ruthless agent for hire and proven to be more than Batman's equal in combat. She first appeared in Richard Dragon Kung Fu Fighter number no. 5 in 1975. That is a great example of a uh, comic that does not exist and is unlikely to exist ever again. Hmm. There was, in some of the New 52, there were some really, really weird um, stories that they tried to bring back or, or redo, one of which was Dial H for Hero, um, which is a definitely weird concept. Prez was another one, I guess. It was kind of a weird concept of a teenager becoming president. Dial H for Hero is that you get this like rotary phone uh, device that lets you summon heroes or turn into heroes, something like that. A lot of those went very, very short amount of times. So I guess we're looking for the Joker, so we'll just look for H 
There we are. There's the Joker. I should be able to find the Joker. He's been in the same place this whole time. Okay. Now, we have the two extra characters. It would probably make a little bit more sense if there was only two grapple points and controlling the goons was just telling the goons to do something for you. Uh, but perhaps you don't have them be grapple points in the first place and you instead have them do something different. You already make an animation for them to beat on walls when they're idle, so it would make a lot of sense for you to have a point where you just tap B and then the Joker would point the goons at the wall and they would just beat on it until it was completely broken. We're just waiting for it to despawn so we can get a little bit closer. I guess we probably didn't need to do that. And then we blow that up. And so you have the cat princess over here and it's just a black cat that even with the brightness turned up you're not even really seeing it and that those lines of dialogue really should have just happened a few seconds later so that the camera had time to move into the right place and show you who's talking. Yeah, I guess it really just kind of boils down to the fact that there's some real bad animation direction going on here. And it's very consistent. Just not moving the camera in the right place, not caring about whether characters are on screen when you're talking uh, or looking at who's talking not timing the lines of dialogue it's clearly a director's work that's lackluster <laughs> who else did we unlock? Copperhead? let's see who Copperhead is Still looking for like the newest character too. I think Grail is going to win that ch challenge. Copperhead is the Brave and the Bold 78 and Brave and the Bold I think was mostly a Batman comic. If anything I have far too much knowledge around DC Comics for as much of a non-fan as I claim to be. Go ahead and start this race. Probably would help if I tried to stay somewhere closer to the center of these rings instead of grabbing a ledge. But honestly, I'm not sure if anything's really going to get around this wonky controls. Same song every time you race. It's a fine song, I guess, and there aren't that many more races, so. Although, weirdly, some of the races have to be on Apocalypse. Katana Combat seems to be our last boss fight. Another character I just don't recognize. But in the middle of the basketball court, it's a decent place. Ah, Katana. I believe she's the lady with her dead husband's spirit in the sword, or at least that's what she believes. That was a terrible photo and way too quick. 
But I don't imagine there would have been any more extra moves. Let's see. Katana. Harnessing the magic of the Soul Taker Sword, Katana is a highly skilled fighter and in second command of Amanda Waller's Task Force X, aka the Suicide Squad. Um, it is weird that in this game, in all kids' games, they call it Task Force X instead of using the word suicide. And yet, I guess this is a stupid comparison to make. Um, yeah, that's a real dumb comparison to make. L let me just rephrase what I was about to say and say, and yet, I imagine there are some very conservative parents who would be okay with their kids hearing the word suicide, who would not be okay with there being a hint of lesbian relationships, uh, which we've seen snuck in into instances in this game. Also, from a more liberal perspective, it's kind of a shame that there aren't more guy-on-guy -guy gay relationships if you're going to go down that route. In the DC Universe, I think there's like literally one or two relationships like that and in all fairness unless you're the main hero of a book and a fairly popular book you don't tend to have any relationships at all uh, that villains and enemies don't show up enough to really uh, touch upon that and then when you get to like Superman it would be weird for Superman to go gay after 50 years of being uh, depicted as being straight, running off of, uh, chasing after Lana Lane or Lois Lane. Although, even in that case, with the new 52 reboot and recently, I don't think Superman really has that much relationship with Lois Lane. Uh, there is a alternate future Superman that has much more of a relationship with the alternate future Lois Lane. Yeah, they don't even mention the hu husband or lover in the soul sword um or her potentially being crazy and thinking that her husband's lover's soul is in the sword uh she appeared in brave and the bold 1983 too i would also say just the phrase suicide should be a phrase that people are familiar with and know it doesn't make the concept not exist just because you don't know the world or uh, that that really just puts a extra level of shame around the concept of suicide or having suicidal thoughts or tendencies when that would just make the situation worse suicide should be really talked about and the events and how it affects other people should be touched upon too even kind of, at a simplistic like, well, well. early uh, level for kids playing even a Lego game I can see why parents wouldn't want to touch upon that subject um, but there's never really going to be a good time particularly in video games to touch on that subject and video games are never going to get any more mature trying to touch on those subjects unless they try with to actually make some commentary that isn't shallow and vapid and and just kind of pathetic that being said that puts a lot of faith in game developers to make a comment that isn't shallow vapid and uh, which even comic books I suspect might also what kind of, have what that gosh, problem gosh, although like, well, I think well. comic books probably write better stories than video games do if I was to pick between the two of them here we have Vixen it's funny they call it Bell Rev instead of Bell Reeve can you get, can some, you shots get some shots of me? I could do it myself. I could do it myself. Maybe a lot faster. faster. If I got help me, help me, and I'd be able to leave this gross, gross, gross a lot quicker. Hey, 
I think I saw I think someone. Almost, almost. Let's take the first take shot there. Here we have another dark-skinned character in the DC universe, which brings the number up to like two or three. I have not a hundred percent certainty as far as which character she is from. So we want to get the backdrop of the place included. They really wanted you to fall in love with the photo mode. But generally photo modes in video games should really just be done as a system level API more than more than I would say it's something that should be wasted as an idea in video games programmers time wasting the programmers time and there's like an Nvidia built-in plugin that takes screenshots a lot of times and even the game engines themselves should just have a built-in screenshot mode inherently you need a screenshot mode anyways because when you're doing QA being able to pull up a screenshot mode and send the screenshot to programmers to highlight a bug is super helpful um, so Effectively, almost every game has a screenshot mode built into it, that even if they don't let the player use it. So he just got some other thugs that can just bounce into him, don't even have to hit a button. You can just chest bump them and they'll eventually break. So I guess maybe Vixen is connected to this. Look how bright his face is. We want to zoom out further and get the statue included in it. So I guess there's something to see with the statue. so yeah let's see let's find vixen and figure out what what character she's from I would almost assume it's a Black Panther character um, which noticeably we haven't seen Black Panther included in this game so I would have to assume this game was either in development or even released before Black Panther wait no Black Panther would be Marvel though wouldn't he so she can't be a Black Panther character Born in African nation of Zambezi, Mary McCabe, or Mari McCabe, learned to use her mystic Tantu totem to channel the powers of Animal Kingdom. After leaving her homeland, Mari became a successful model and later joined the Justice League, using her totem to fight crime as a superhero vixen. She showed up in Action Comics 521, 1981. So she's a Justice League character. A very, very unrecognizable Justice League character. Look at this. When she runs, it summons a Lego ghost of a panther. And when she flies, it summons a Lego bird. That is really cool. But that really sucks. That... A significant number of 
people would never even see that. I had three, three monster, monster leeches, leeches that I was, was planning to release, release around Gotham, around Gotham. But, the but the boss said, boss said my plan was, was boring. boring. But the boss, the boss won't, won't let me keep, him, keep him, now, him now, so I gotta, so I gotta, let, gotta let, let him go. go but but I, can't I can't do it. Oh, would you do it for me? Okay. She throws something, but not something that destroys silver. It feels like this is big Lego leech-like creature. Okay. So I guess this is just one of these puzzles where it's swapped between the characters for different abilities. I heavily suspect they never did make an actual Lego leech in any Lego set, but you know, a Star Wars set potentially could have happened. Something like it, that could have happened. Let's see. I'm trying to get the phone to come up. Let's see. Vixen says, I think I just had, I think you just had low blood sugar. The photographer from Bell Rev. Photo she is feeling a lot better now. Okay. Not much of a real interesting text there. That's an interesting thought, certainly. There probably is some character in the DC Universe that has like low blood sugar or diabetes or something like that. It's fairly common. The cold brick didn't even spawn correctly there. Yeah, it's a fairly common disease, but inherently most heroes are expected to be perfectly healthy, and so even having diabetes is just a hindrance to the rider, who often wouldn't want to have to talk about that. And let's be honest, a significant number of people that have type 2 diabetes, adult diabetes, have it because they have spent a lifetime eating sugar, which is often not their fault in, in the Western world where sugar is in everything, but they are often overweight and indulge in sugar say, say quite a bit. But like most diets, a low sugar diet is just as difficult or to nearly impossible to follow as any other diet. I guess I already did this race. Yeah, there's just a purple stud in it, so we don't need to do that again. So, I assume there aren't any open world quests that are being added because I purchased DLC. This could have been a quest that was added because of purchasing Batman the Animated Series. It, that would make a lot of sense. But I'm just generally going to assume that's not the case. Also want to generally look around and see what else new is unlocked. It doesn't seem like much. A few more quests here and there, and maybe those quests lead to something else. What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm, a I'm a control. How did we How end, did up, we end up in Alligator City? City? A Lego microfig style puppet. They now have a Lego baby that is really cool looking and probably is an, a testament to Lego being able to make even smaller pieces if they wanted to but they really wouldn't go in that direction because it would be too easy to swallow or lose the pieces. Um, but the idea of the baby 
is a cool addition. Quiet, quiet, dummy. If I wanted, if I wanted your, your opinion, opinion, I'd pull your strength. So, so, you numb skulls, numb skulls gonna help me or what? Or what? Don't Pretty much in the animated on, series, on, the the puppet here is actually alive. Although in other stories, I am sure it's actually the guy that's just crazy. Mr. Scarface pays repairs to his body parts. These are special parts. Only the finest will do. So please say yes before he does something rash. This is obviously also character. You heard a man. Go steal me some new pieces before you find yourself in pieces plays up a lot on the idea of the puppet in the Goosebumps series. It was pretty prominent too. Around the same time. I have no idea where I'm supposed to go to get these pieces. And it's weird for Vixen to just be purring. And I cannot find a single character that wants to just be somewhat silent. What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm, a, I'm a control. Come, come. Let's just start quiet, this again. Mr. Mr. Maybe if I removed the map point, that would help me a little. I just have no idea where I'm supposed to be going to get these pieces. You've got cans. And we've got bottles and we've got wood. And if there was something like. Oh, they're all over here. Okay. They're all in Ace Chemicals. My concern was that it was going to be a kind of final version of one of these challenges where you would have had to have done the other challenges first to find similar items and then you would have had to remember where you got those items before which that would have been asking a lot frankly for a kids game Did we get something from that? I guess we did. Hmm. Oh, we got the police after us. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. Yeah, seemingly beating up the people is giving you resources. So, either there's one more guy, which it looks like there is. Oh, she also does a gorilla. Did we get everything over here? Yes. But we need to go back this direction. Watch it. You can't, you can't beat, beat me. me. I'm a man. I'm a man. 
Did I get everything? Looks like it. Now we just need to go to the next area. It's noticeably hard to have any commentary. It's just not a lot to say when you're just fighting people or... What do you mean? What do you mean, pun, punny? Do I look do I punny, look punny, punny to you? To you? Do I you amuse, amuse you? you? We need one more piece of wood, which is here. So we've collected everything. Now if I can just find the way back to the swamp. I can't really complain to say the game is super grindy in this overworld. It's, it's just a little too grindy for its own good. And then you contrast that with the open world just not being that interesting visually. It, it, that compounds the problem. And so Scarface. Scarface, where is he? He's gotta be somewhere over here. Should be right after Scarecrow. And yet he isn't. What would he be under otherwise? Hmm. Toy Man's a different character. Ventriloquist. Ah, that's what his name is. Okay, okay, dummy. Let's get, Let's going. get going. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Scarface. Scarface. So. One of Batman's most bizarre phones, the weak-willed Arnold Wesker, channels his inner criminal personality through a puppet called Scarface, known as the ventriloquist Wesker acts in fear as a servant to Scarface, with no one knowing for certain which of the two personalities is really in control. And they reference him as his first comic appearance being in Detective Comics, comics 583 in 1988 which might be slightly before Batman the animated series but I wouldn't really bet on it I wouldn't be surprised if 1988 was right when he was introduced in the animated series and then they introduced him in the comics too there's clearly a red conning going on here in that they are implying all of these characters were originally created by people in DC Comics, in DC Comics exclusively, um, and that any spin off series that introduced any other characters just doesn't really exist. Okay, I hear they pump some sort of toxin in the bell weave onto the roof to keep the inmates chirpy during yard time. And the entrance to those rooms sure have a lot of interesting plant life, huh? And then, huh, wonder if those pipes next to the tunnel leading back to Gotham could be affected by local flora and fauna. Okay. So that tells me where the three plants are. One is here. One. 
I guess we can get to the temple. But I kind of fly over here. Yeah, there's just this whole statue. And I have no idea what that's all about. So somewhere around here is a plant. Just gotta find it. Maybe it's deep inside. There it is. I kind of wish that le led somewhere and explained itself a lot better. If you're gonna have a doorway. A cutscene, a conversation, anything like that would make sense. There's a purple stud just here. We're really only getting to like 3 billion now. You don't really need extra studs. Looking for a plant. And the pipes all seem to connect and then lead back down this way. But I suspect the plant is down here. may just be flying too high and it may not be spawning in. But it could also be a case that the plant is actually down this way and they're pumping things up from that point. Makes sense if it was over here. Then it might make sense if it's over here. Then we'll jump down and try to get a view. might be a great example of where a hint may just not be good enough. It definitely seems like there's a lot of different places here where a plant could be. find something. Vixen as a character almost certainly was designed to sell to teenage boys. A object of attraction type character or lady of attraction. Although, in fairness, I, they, they are made up fictional characters, so object, I think, probably would be the right phrase. Not sure they would be so blatant about it nowadays if they were creating a new femme fatale type character. Although, in all fairness, the new Harley Quinn outfit definitely plays up some of that idea. I 
and that even plays into the DC live action movies. That was something that was very noticeable in the first Suicide Squad is that I think her name is Margot Robbie, the actress, was being centered and ogled and gazed at by the camera and focused on visually a lot more in the trailers and in the movie compared to the other Suicide Squad characters who frankly had less attention put on them. Let's read the challenge again. Um, I hear they pump some sort of toxin onto the roof of Bell Reeve to keep the inmates inmates chirpy during yard time. On to the roof of Bell Reeve. We've looked at the roof of Bell Reeve. Which we haven't found anything, so let's follow these pipes. Although it feels like these pipes go all the way to Ace Chemicals. And that just seems like that's too far. just have this ace chemical green goo going the full length of this road I suppose it's also worth pointing out that a camera can get thousands of still images very quickly compared to the one still image that would be hand drawn in a comic so, it speaks more to the intent of the creator, a lot more, if one still panel, one still frame of, of a comic book is in a very lurid pose, or uh, if the characters have particularly tight spandex outfits when being depicted, whereas you could just blame the costume director or the, uh, the coincidence as far as a single frame or even a few frames being a little bit lurid in a movie. Although, in fairness, if you have an entire scene that is obviously designed that way, as is often the case, you can't really use that excuse very much. Particularly in the Suicide Squad first movie, um, Harley Quinn in her underwear uh, doing all kinds of weird Miley Cyrus wrecking ball type um, I would call it almost Cirque du Soleil poses. Which that really has not been in the way that they've ever depicted Harley Quinn before as her being particularly a Cirque du Soleil performer. If anything it would make a lot more sense to make the assumption that Harley Quinn actually does not have any like circus ability and was just dressing up to match um, the Joker's costume and outfit. I think I'm gonna have to give up on this one. Like it, it does just seem to me like I am not seeing that one flower. Yeah. 
I feel like I've tried really hard here to find it. And I'm either misinterpreting the hint. Or the flower is actually somewhere else or not spawning in. I'm just not, or I'm just not seeing it. This really should be fairly easy to find. If it wasn't up here, it should be kind of over here. You can even see the stuff being spewed out. And if it's not there, then it should be down here. Is it possible that it's on the pipe and that it doesn't spawn until you get fairly close to it? Possible, yes, probable, I'd say no. It feels like at some point there would have been ladders and some kind of parkour challenge to climb to the top of these. We can go around the edge here. And just in case I missed it somehow. Just not seeing anything. You'd think that you'd be able to spot it potentially while standing on one of these platforms. some kind of area around here that is kind of obscured. Hmm. Doesn't seem like that would be the case though. Absolute best here. But I think I have to give up. Because I've spent too much time on this. I may just have to look at a walkthrough.
They are collecting studs throughout this whole mess. But if anything, that's just highlighting the uselessness of studs. There's nothing here. It would be very strange also if it was further down in this direction. Because nothing else really has crossed that line that much. Alright, well, overall, we have done everything in this area. We wouldn't want to waste time and go and do bottles from bats. Poster painters, I guess these are Gotham City things. We also never did find this run runaway roundup character, so we now have two things that we haven't figured out. Roof of Bell Rave to keep the inmates, inmates chirpy. Let's see. Power plant has secret path underneath Bossman's head. Some seems pretty pointless. Hmm. That's apocalypse. Two. It's a known fact that ancient Egyptians wore bow ties. I love the fashion sense in Chinatown. Even the cable car stations got great style. Who says you can't look great in an old abandoned cathedral? Police uniforms are really improving. Even the statues look cool. Statues facing Metropolis Hotel are just stunning. So most of these seem to be in Gotham and Metropolis. And then File Finder, there's going to be a lot of these. So we don't want to really engage with that yet. Could there be a game guru thing? No, I think all the rest are in Apocalypse. And then Golden Graffiti is in Apocalypse. And Gotham for the last two statues. I would say particularly for the swamp felt unsatisfactory doing getting all those gold breaks but we can see we've made a significant amount of progress by these metrics 100% of map points have been found 87 of the gold breaks have been collected 70% of missions 74% of races 87% of monuments have been va vandalized now that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It shouldn't be 87%. That, that's, that's a rounding issue, almost certainly. And then we've just done nothing in Apocalypse. Because we haven't gotten there. We unlocked three or four characters over the last hour and 30 minutes. And we can continue to commit to unlocking more characters. Yeah. Parasite, for instance. I'd like to know where he is. Rudy Jones was a janitor for Star Labs who became exposed to strange radioactive materials while searching for valuable items to steal, left with the ability to drain power from anyone he comes into contact with. Rudy has become the Parasite, one of Earth's most dangerous villains, and is first comic appearance and character debut was in Action Commons 340 in 1966. He definitely feels more like he would have been a Flash character because they're mentioning Star Labs, but I I guess he's probably more of a Firestorm character, if anything, considering his current version showed up in Firestorm 50 
eight in 1987. Yeah, at a certain level, I guess some of these characters possibly um, returned and and got rewritten or got traded off from one hero to the other. As far as the 3D model viewer here, which is another thing you kind of need in debugging, they've given you a pretty bad system where I can hit right bump to spin something, but it doesn't even end up with him staying in the same position. But the right stick itself does not control the, the orientation of the 3D model. Um, and left stick selects between the abilities, even if it's off screen, you're still moving things. You can tell by the scroll bar that the text is changing as I'm moving things. So that it feels like it would make a lot of sense to potentially be able to press the A button in this section since the A button is not even connected to anything and go into a full screen 3D model viewer of the character or just a much slower and right trigger left trigger to orient a character since right trigger and left trigger is not doing anything. Even the D-pad could move the character around, but it doesn't. So if I just wanted to see this guy facing the screen, I would literally have to just keep on pressing the button until he got somewhere close to facing the screen. Which, that's not super helpful. And then we'll just unlock the remaining bits of characters, Polka Dot Man. Let's see, when would Polka Dot have shown up? I think he... What's funny is there's a character named The Spot in Marvel, who's a Spider-Man villain, but Polka Dot Man came out in 1962 and so may have predated The Spot in Detective Comics number 300. It is important, I guess, to mention that Batman issue 666, which they made a big deal about, came out probably three or four years ago, so somewhere around 2020, I would guess. Um, so from somewhere in the 1940s, they were able to make 300 Detective Comics, comics and then I think Detective Comics 666 was actually the issue came out somewhere in uh, 2020 so it's a slow journey but a very long journey uh, let's see one of Batman's more unusual foes little's known about the early life of Abner Krill other than his fascination with circles which inspired his technology in garish attire using his vast array of dot themed devices the spot obsessed supervillain is known as the bizarre polka dot man and definitely this is a character who was introduced in 1962 because they had no other ideas and just needed a new villain to create at a certain point it would have made a lot of sense to um, this is Power Ring, an Injustice Syndicate character from 2013, Justice League number 23. Uh, although, Hal Jordan of Earth 3 is apparently first appearing in 1964 as Justice League number 29, although, I'm not sure if they are saying that Hal Jordan himself showed up in Justice League number 29 or if Hal Jordan of Earth 3 showed up in 1964. Visually it would be the same character, personality wise it would be a completely different character. Simon. Hmm. Haven't heard of this one. Teen Titans character that explains it. Originally a highly intelligent physicist, 
Dr. Simon Jones conducted the experiments in an attempt to contact other realms when Jones met Trigon the Terrible, the father of Teen Titan Raven, he was granted incredible psychic and psionic powers and helped form the vil villainous Fearsome Five. Okay. And that's the Teen Titan characters in the main collection. Raj al Ghul. He'll be a very old character from 1971, Batman 232. Although, arguably, not really much of a villain these days, considering how his, his daughter basically gave birth to, D, to one of the Robins with Bruce Wayne, Batman. And so he's effectively like a grandfather to... Or grandfather, father-in-law to Bruce Wayne, and grandfather to Robin. Let's see, this character is a new Teen Titans number one in 1980, and let's see, current version was in 1992. Ravager, daughter of Deathstroke. I've never even heard of this character. Interesting. <laughs> Is she a plumper character? Because it kind of looks like she would be. Which might be an interesting gimmick to go with. To have a Deathstroke like killer. Although, I guess it also makes a lot of sense that um, the minifigs always have this weird lack of shapeliness to them because you have these triangle torsos and they have to use prints <laughs> to make any of the characters feel like they are they have any shapely torsos. This is weird that you can only see the inside of Raven's outfit when she's like attacking something. Which her outfit's not that unique, a black leotard with a belt, so there isn't really a lot to see there. But she would be also a younger Teen Titan character. But it, it is weird to just kind of have her almost ghost-like in her depiction. And if you double tap, she seems to turn into a bat and dash, which is an interesting like teleport ability does it let you teleport through things it doesn't seem like it can we teleport through objects that can be broken yes of course adding a teleport ability is not that useful since there, we've seen no puzzles around that jason todd aka the I think first Robin. Nope. He is the second Robin, Jason Todd. Second year of the service, Batman sidekick Robin. Jason Todd's life was filled with tragedy from a young age after losing his family and then being caught in an explosion. Jason Todd returned years later as the Red Hood, a vengeful anti hero prepared to dispense his own hardline brand of justice. He showed up in 1983's Batman number 357. When did Raven actually show up? Like, particularly for the Teen Titans, if you told me that the Teen Titans characters in particular were originally created in the Teen Titans cartoon, I kind of believe you, but I don't think it's really the truth. Uh, they definitely were popularized um, in the Teen Titans comics, but... Apparently DC Comics Presents 1980, issue number 26 is where she first showed up. Uh, that was probably the introduction of the entire idea of the Teen Titans. Uh, DC Comics Presents is, to my understanding, a series where they always try to introduce new ideas and start new series without fully committing. She's the only daughter of Trigun the Terrible. Raven grew up in a peaceful realm of 
Azeroth learning to harness her dark magic powers and use them for the cause of good, later captured by Chorgon and sent to Earth to do his bidding, Raven rebelled and joined her newly adopted family, the Teen Titans. And on the left you can see how they've depicted her outfit, which I guess that inherently does say that they're not trying to really hide her, they just decided to do something silly with her and have her in the robe. It is a little surprising that there aren't more like shy style superheroes that say why are we always wearing this leather and spandex outfits why don't I cover up my body a little bit more for with armor or just in camo. So Red Robin should be the third Robin. Tim Drake the third Robin after learning Batman's secret identity and seeking the aid of a former Robin Dick Grayson aka Nightwing which I guess he was the first Robin. He's now known as Robin Red Robin. Tim remains a highly skilled member of Batman's quote family who also served on other teams such as the Teen Titans. He first showed up in Batman number 436 1989. That being said, we've now hit a point, or we've well passed the point where it would be helpful to just have a timeline for each of these comics. Um, I would very much appreciate if there was something on the left side of the screen, which was the very first DC comic, which would be kind of hard to even say which would, would have been the first DC comic, detective comic because there was a company before DC that changed its name to DC, I believe. So, But yeah, just starting with like the first Detective Comic, issue number one, uh, and the date for that. If you just had a branching timeline that moved to the right and had a iconic character for each one of these at the point where they first appeared, that would give us much more of an informative relative depiction of this information. Uh, whereas they've separated everything out into these little synopsises. But if I want to ask a simple question about when was Red Hood introduced versus Red Robin, I would just have to find those two data points and uh, compare it myself. Where a timeline would tell me where all the characters showed up and which character showed up first and which character showed up latest. Seeking I don't think is going to be anything special. He'll be yet another crime syndicate character. Justice League number 23 in 2013. Which that may very well indicate that the crime syndicate storyline was very close to the beginning of the release of this game or the, the beginning of the development of this game. Um, seems like 23 to 2015 would be about the time. And let's see, this guy, Gentleman Ghost, or no, The Shade. Um, first appeared in Flash Comics number 33. I think particularly for the Flash they got really crazy with their types of villains because the Flash was so fast that you had to introduce people with either cold ability or fire ability or uh, being ghosts or being speedsters themselves to even have a chance to defeat the Flash. Uh, the Shade here was born in the 19th century. Richard Swift was a trader of exotic animals who was forced into taking part in a mysterious ritual by one of his clients after the incident accidentally granted him the ability to manipulate dark man magic. Richard became the Shade, an immensely powerful supervillain. Yeah. I've never heard of this character at all. Shazam. It might be interesting to figure out where Shazam first appeared. It almost certainly would be very early. His first appearance in Wiz Comics number 2 in 1940. 
So very, very early um, appearance. The current version in Justice League number seven in 2012. So yeah, they, they definitely were right in the middle when making this game around the idea of the new 52 and the reboot and recreating a lot of these characters. Although the vast majority of these characters we've looked at have not been recreated as far as this game is concerned. When I suspect that's not the case. I, I kind of think I have seen a new version of Banshee was introduced and yet it's not being mentioned. It's just saying that her first appearance was in Action Comics 595 in 1987. She was a Superman villain. I'm fairly certain. I imagine all of the Gorilla City characters are were introduced just about the same time in Flash, fairly early too. Flash number 106 in 1959. We're taking far too long to look at these characters, but this is ironically some of the best content for the game. Like Star Sapphire as a character. She might be a lot newer than you would think. Um, her first appearance was in showcase number 22 in 1959's Carol Ferris, but she wasn't a Green Lantern or Star Sapphire character, which is part of the, I think, Indigo Core. Um, no, Star Sapphire Cores. Um, until Green Lantern number 16 in 1962. Chosen by a race of aliens to be a new star, star sapphire, Carol Ferris was originally forced into fighting the Green Lantern uh, core, I guess. However, after the Youngs changed their ways, Carol now acts as a hero leading the star sapphire cores, using her violent ring to ensure that love will conquer all. So, um, Green lanterns use the power of willpower to power up their rings star sapphires use the power of love the blue star sapphire people use the power of hope red ringed characters the red lantern core use the power of rage and they're kind of bad guys um and yellow use the power of fear for the sinestro core so there is this whole spectrum of colors and spectrum of emotions, which perhaps could be an interesting way to talk about emotional stability a lot more than it really does. Or people being on like the autism spectrum and not being able to control their emotions as much. Uh, Stephen Wolf here, it was 1972. Stampa, I bet, is also 1972. Mr. Miracle, number six. Superboy would have been... What? Probably somewhere around Action Comics 100, I would guess. Uh, More Fun Comics 101 in 1945. And for the new version of Superboy as of when this game was made which I don't think is the newest version of Superboy because he got rebooted a few times uh, relatively recently but they're saying it would have been Convergence Superman number two in 2015 which at that point that makes him also one of the newest characters um, although in fairness I think Grail still wins it as far as the newest character because her original appearance is in 2015. <laughs> 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 
Superwoman. It will just be in that same Justice League. Terra will be a Teen Titans character. Although, in the Teen Titans cartoon, Terra, I don't believe, looks anything like this because Terra doesn't really have an outfit. Troubled teenager Terra Markov discovered the ability she had the metahuman ability to of geokinesis allowing her to manipulate rocks and other earth-based elements once an ally of the teen tartans and the secret underling of deathstroke she now uses her power for her own purposes as Terra. she showed up in new teen titans number 26 in 1982 hmm. yeah not a very good costume there i would say for Terra. i, I don't know what you're really going with with the orange patches uh, the way they are I guess maybe it's supposed to be maybe a T type form or, but yeah that doesn't look good as an outfit hmm. Trickster I believe is a flash character the tri the tri I'm basically looking at every single character. Yeah, character debut, The Flash, number 113 in 1960. Current version, Flash 183. Hmm. Apparently, this is the second person to use the name Trickster, which isn't a, the worst idea ever to have somebody... Um, copy an old <laughs> villain that's already been defeated yeah, I think I'm running out of steam here so I, it's good that we're close to being done wow this guy can be really big which I don't think that's gonna be that helpful he moves really slowly and seems like he can just walk over walls walk up walls because of that which then also allows him to just float in the air hmm. he showed up in new teen titans number nine number two in 1980 the camera is going to take its sweet time to zoom back in. Toy Man should be another Batman character. I guess not. Maybe he is more of a Superman villain originally, showing up in Action Comics number 64. Action Comics pretty much were Superman stories after the first 16 or so, I would guess. Ultraman, and then this guy. So, these are all custom characters, to point that out. So, then that just leaves us with unlocking the remaining characters in either free play mode or in the open world section. But we've done as much as can be done. We have a Killer Frost Ice Car. Still seems like there's a decent number of races, more than I would expect in the overworld. So we may find ourselves doing some races in the overworld and then unlocking some more races in the same way that we've unlocked some more ability uh, quests or some more of these quests. I wouldn't even have a lot of faith that we would finish the open world content in the next episode. Probably the episode after the next episode, unless I just go super long like I have here. We have, however, moved the metric up some more. We're now at 73.1% complete. We have 220 out of 270 characters unlocked, which leaves us to get about 50 more we have 138 out of 224 gold bricks which i think that probably just highlights 
that a lot of gold bricks are going to be collected in free play mode a lot more than I thought it would be and then the graffiti stuff and is also going to be in free play mode you probably have a significant amount of new customizable items to make a custom character if you were going to care about that but take notice the only way I've ever found any way to have fun with having so many minifig characters in a Lego game is because of the character synopsis in this game and I can't think of there being character synopsis for any of the other Marvel or DC games and I'm almost a hundred percent certain there won't be any character synopsis for any of the other Lego games um, so making a custom character to get back to my point would fall incredibly flat on me and always has because I just don't want to create a custom minifig character in a Lego DC game if I was going to make a create a custom character it would have to be in a custom game where there is not backstory for any of the other characters which overall I would probably just find that boring anyways that's going to be it for this recording as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend or follow me on any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below thank you for watching have a good evening